Hey everybody, so in video number three in the group theory series, I made some mistakes last time, so I just want to go through and do everything correctly this time so I don't confuse anybody. E, we're going to talk about, and then we're going to talk about inversion, and finally, S. So E is the really simple one. Every molecule has E. So methane has E, and it's in the TD point group. And a metal with six ligands that's in the OH point group has an E. And let's say H2O, which is in C2V, that also has E. E is just contained in every character table, and it is just the basic operation that's there for mathematical completeness that any molecule can have. So a large protein that is has many, many chiral centers that still has E. So everything, no matter what, has E. Um, and when you're doing uh, problems later, so let's say you're talking about CH4, when you put it through E, no atoms shift. So there's five atoms in here. So the number you'd write down for the shifting would be five for E. And don't worry if you don't know what I'm talking about or you don't have to learn this stuff, just ignore that. Now let's talk about inversions. Inversions are pretty easy. They, it's just, um, it's exactly what you think it is. Your molecule will have a center point and all of the points on the outside are going to invert through that point. So I think in the first video, I used carbon dioxide. And what you'd have is this as the center point and each of these sides could invert to the other side and you'd end up with the same molecule so if we switch this it would look exactly the same so that means this does have an inversion center now what about something that doesn't have an inversion center well um, how about this now obviously you can't flip that around so it has no inversion center sorry if that's a simplistic example um, let's see if we can do something better how about this some kind of fluorocarbon now if this was planar that means this whole thing is in the board this way that would have an inversion center so this F could invert with that F and this H could invert with that H over here so you've got full inversion that's pretty nice and the way this works is you count the unshifted atoms again so usually this is always one or zero kind of like S S is going to often be one or zero so in this one everything would shift Remember, these carbons would shift too and you'd have zero everything would move whereas up here with this carbon dioxide that would stay the same so if you shift that one like that and that one like that your carbon in the middle doesn't move so you'd get a one there for that now let's talk about S S is a rotation and then a reflection now these can get kind of complicated but when you're calculating they're not that bad so let's say you have an S4 and maybe you don't even know you had an S but you just looked in your character character table and you saw you had an S4 so when you're calculating the contribution per atom which I haven't gotten to yet but we will it's two times the cosine of theta minus one and just like you would with a C4 for S you're just going to go 2 times cosine of 90 minus 1 because remember this is just 360 divided by 4 that, that's what that designates there it's 360 over n so you're going to get 90 from that 
and that's what you put in there for that angle. Um, if you want to go through and do a little example of this, here's methane. And if we drew it like this, this is a very weird way to draw it, but this is the best way to show S. We're kind of looking straight down the C2 axis here. So what you do is you rotate this by 90 degrees. And then you do a reflection. So these will flip up. Nope. Oh, that's not right. That's hydrogen there. and these will go back and so if you're calculating this for the number of shifted atoms in here all of the hydrogen shift all of the hydrogens will shift. But the central atom stays the same. So usually it'll be the ligands all contribute zero and the central atom contributes one. Now if you don't have a central atom it'll probably be just like in the inversion case up here where you get a zero. So oftentimes in here, for the number of shifted, um, unshifted atoms, you will have one or zero. And calculating the contribution per atom is pretty straightforward. Okay, and before I finish this video up, I just want to show you guys a little thing. This is the Symmetry at Otterbein website. Um, if you just type in group theory in Otterbein, you should be able to find this site. And what you can do is you can select molecules on here, and you can put them through rotations. So let me show you this. Here is S4, and you're going to see there's the reflection plane it goes through. That's that thing right there. And then here is your pole of the, the, um, the rotation axis. So. You can just select this, put it straight down, and then go rotate. It'll show you them moving, and then they'll go up and down. See that again. There you go. I think the frame rate's like 15 frames a second on this video, so maybe you're not going to see it too well, but try it again. There you go. Okay. So it moves 90 degrees, which is going to go 90, and then it's going to reflect. Okay. And of course you can see everything else too. There's your C3 in there. And here it shows you your reflection planes. Sometimes this is nice for really complicated molecules and they do have a lot of stuff on here, so it's pretty awesome. That's a pretty cool one. C6V. You can see all your different planes of reflection. There's your C6 and you can rotate everything. Um, you probably just have to have Java installed on here, and it should work for you. Okay, so that's it for this video. See you guys next time.